right here, right here. Uh, right down there. Hi, I, I just couldn't wait to get this off my chest because this film really fascinated me. Uh, I've, I've seen it probably five times by myself and with a couple of fellow film critics back where I come from. Which is where? Uh, in the Philippines, yeah. Oh, very good. So I think this film is a tremendous comedic exercise. Um, I, had the, I had a discussion with a film critic over this film and say, what makes these particular scenes funny? And he said something that fit perfectly. He said, I asked him, what's funny? And he said, anything that doesn't happen to you. <laughs> and he, the director is basically fulfilling that message all throughout the film. I'm going to present you with a series of vish, uh, vishnets. And when you think about them, they're very, well, if not very, they're depressing, they're sad. If you were in that situation, there's nothing, there's nothing funny about it. But presenting it to us, you know, he has a complete mastery of tone, how I'm going to frame this scene, how I'm going to use, uh, for example, Pretty much throughout all the film, the, exterior, uh, the, the sets, the lighting, the colors are pretty much drab all the way throughout, sometimes lifeless, sometimes bleak. Yet, he counters that with characters that look, um, well, they don't look like movie stars. You know, some, most of them are fat, overweight. I'm not saying he's ridiculing them. It's just that they're somewhat off kilter. So it leaves the audience somewhat off balance. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and though the, you know, the, the lightning storm, it's depressing, he, he contrasts that with music. And the music is not depressing at all. It's mm. actually kind of funny. So I would have loved to talk to the director if, he, if this was really an exercise showing I'm going to manipulate the audience and make them laugh with pretty much anything I want. Even the final scene, I was surprised by the final scene when I saw it. Uh, these bombers coming in, and I don't think anybody felt really depressed when they saw it. You know, in I, fact, I, did. <laughs> I a bunch of bombers coming on this film. I, I mean, if you see it, ter it's terrifying. If you if you see it without without the the funny music, yeah, it it seems oh god, you know what an ending. But somehow he's able to to draw out some whimsy from it. I think originally, too, he was using a different piece of music to score it, and he changed it. Um, yeah. Um, I think, what you're, to your point, uh, Mel Brooks, I'm paraphrasing, but Mel Brooks said, tragedy is if I get a hangnail, comedy is if you fall down a sewer and die. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Yeah. Um, ro ro okay. Well, what, what, Roger Ebert here. Hold on. They were only flying over Sweden. <laughs> so it's funny if it doesn't happen to you, okay. But actually that funny if it doesn't happen to you, then we should have laughed a lot more for the wall, I think. That's, that definition doesn't quite fit. Okay, who's, uh, one more uh, or here and then down here after that. Sure. Um, the, um, uh, a couple of things. I think the contrast, for me, th there are certain scenes that I find incredibly sad. Um, and um, and not in a not in a kind of in a hip way. Oh, isn't that sad? But but genuinely, I find the the scene the, the vignette with the professor so moving. I think that is the one that is the one scene where where you can't feel. But I, I was moved to tears again, uh, just because you, you you feel the desperation in the guy's voice as he t as he puts the phone down, and you feel this. You can you can understand that this might not be. This might not be just this uh, kind of uh, uh, whimsical little child trying to get money that he might have a problem with it because he, he puts the phone down before getting, the, be before getting the money from him. But at the same time, you've got that counteracted with the, with, you know, countered with the, um, uh, you know, with the, with the table scene, which, is, which, which reminds me of, of, of all things, the, the, the Stonehenge gag. Um, because in, th in that one as well, you know exactly what's going to happen. 
uh, with Angelica Houston and, and the manager, they're, they're talking about the fact that the, the, the monument is so small. You know that what joke is coming. You see the joke, the joke is funny. And the same, again, here, that's exactly what happens. You know that, the, you know that it's going to be this monumental disaster. And the, joke, the, the, the setup for the jokes are all distended. I mean, he just goes so far. But I mean, apropos of what you're talking about, I mean, I think that first scene when he's talking about the dream is really kind of terrifying. And, mm. and I do think that, like what you're talking about, that, that Bergman is really, he's, he's using that the, the way that in uh, those films that, that Nightfish shot, mm -hmm. the camera doesn't move. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you, the, the actors, the, the camera subjects are almost impaled on the camera. And it just, it takes so much patience to not do that, that you find yourself, even as you're laughing, slightly off balance by it. You're unnerved by that steadiness yes. of gaze. Absolutely. And there's a, a final bit, which is a final um, observation. The tram, uh, the destination of the tram is uh, letter, is death, uh, which, is, which is exactly the, uh, quote, from the, the quote from uh, Goethe that you have in the beginning. You know, so you know that these guys are going to die, and then, but it's going to take them a long, long time because the tram is really slow. Very good. <laughs> Can I? Uh, right down here. He, in the uh, wedding scene, he tantalized us at the beginning. You could see out the window, but you didn't know what you were seeing out that window. Um, I was fascinated by how they actually made it work. Is there someone who could explain how they made the room move and the people move, what kind of mechanics were involved? This is, I'm sorry, the, 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 the train scene. sequence. Uh, oh, God. Did they build the two floors of the thing, or did they move them that way? What did they, what moved? They, uh, well, well, I don't know. No, the, he, was, he was moving stuff around it at first. Yes. Initially, the, the basically moving a, sort of a big flat. Past the it's photographic. You saw something move. Yeah, but you know what it was. But remember, it's moving very slowly at first. Right. I mean, it's barely moving at all, and then it slowly starts to speed up. And then eventually, what happens is it starts. It stops moving. And you realize the building is moving. It's on a big gimbal. Yes. And it's moving it around towards that crowd. I mean, it's it's on an enormous soundstage. I mean, do we, do we know if the beginning of that shot is 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 in fact just outside the soundstage, or is that all within that's all, the? That's all within. All within the soundstage. Yeah, it's all. It, it's all inside because you want to be able to control that and to control the light. I mean, because it's really kind of gray and almost you think like it's a yes. cloud cover outside the way you would see a cloudy tableau out of a, a train a window. Right. And then suddenly you realize you're seeing uh, the, the stuff outside, but it's, it's, and it's, it's coming into focus, and then it sort of goes out of focus again as the building starts to move. So he's constantly sort of changing the perspective. He also played a game with us with the bride you think that the bride is interested in more personal things to go on, but she's also fascinated by his playing. She's stringing herself on, and she strings him on, and then the other... Uh, but it's also albums. great having two pieces of music played on camera. I mean, the tuba at the very beginning, you don't know where the rest of the orchestra is, but you know that he's keeping the bass line going with the tuba, and then, and then that guitar is playing right to the camera. That's really... That's, those are very soulful moments. I, 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 I just find, fun. speaking to what truly, I mean, I, I do find her uh, yearning um, uh, probably the most moving thing in the picture, and and just and it, it's even a bit sadder just because it might just be um, yearning after kind of an abstract, you know, you know, the musician of your dreams, and you know, the dreamy musician, and, and the nightmare musician with the, the tuba, with the tuba, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Up in the balcony? Please. 